everyone doing today? Good, this thanks, year? Cousin. Hey. Excellent. Could be better. Uh, good, good and bad, like everyone, I think. Good and bad. B In minus. Extremes. B minus. <laughs> <laughs> variable. My report would definitely say variable. <laughs> or just at all. Like, uh, when did everything finish wrapping up, uh, wrap on the shoot? Well, we wrapped a shoot back in, I think it was the very beginning of, uh, end of February, beginning of March. We shot for a week in Mauritania, which was, Tahar was the only one of the actors who came, who came there. And, uh, and then I haven't seen anyone since, because everything's been done remotely. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Benedict and I live around the corner from each other, and we had a cup of coffee kind of remotely one day. And other than that, I haven't seen anybody in the flesh, I don't think. Oh, me and Jodie Foster didn't get invited to that. I don't think Shailene Woodley did either. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. That's Listen, move into the neighborhood and you can all oh, come okay. sort of at a socially distanced round. Yeah. That would be fine. So, so I see, so Kevin McDonald takes uh, Benedict out for coffee and goes out with Tahar to Mauritania. I think I took Kevin out for coffee. Let's just be, I'd like to te also that technicality. <laughs> It's important awesome. to note these things, especially the when you're dealing with the Scot. <laughs> I did buy the copy. Amazing. Um, uh, no, it's lovely to see you. And I, we, it's strange. I never met Shaleen or Raheem. Um, I, I, I've never met either of them. And I didn't meet them, obviously, on the film. My character doesn't work with either of them. I, I last saw and worked with Jody over a year ago. And yeah, Kevin, we just had coffee a couple of months ago. I guess. Well, I guess this is a good place to start. Uh, I guess to start with uh, Kevin, you can uh, answer this. You're directing a cast that, you know, aren't, they're, they're not together. Uh, they're an ensemble, but they're not an ensemble playing off one another because they're either in pairs or, or alone a, a lot. How did you have that uh, speak to one another in terms of the, the editing room, the process, and getting that story to make it feel as organic as possible? Well, it was pretty useful, actually, in a way that, you know, these the, the, the various stories, there were basically three different stories in the film, and we did shoot them pretty much um, uh, separate to each other. Obviously, uh, Benedict and Jody have two scenes together, um, and they were in Cape Town, which I'm sure where we shot most of the film. They were there for, they crossed over for a week or so. Um, and uh, um, other than that, it was, you know, around everybody's schedule. And, um, you know, we did, we, we, we ended the film by shooting in Mauritania. And prior to that, we'd shot the, the kind of interrogation sequences, the big interrogation sequence, which take, took about a week with Tahar. So that was kind of what we were building, building up to. Um, and that was really the challenge of this whole movie, both in the script and in the editing was how do you take these disparate stories and weave them together in a way that uh, uh, is compelling and uh, where you want to know what happens next and where you don't feel like, oh, these are three completely disconnected stories. Obviously, I had a great advantage of that, that, that Shailene and Jody, who form a great pairing, that they are together. So, so you know, that was something to, to hold on to in the, in the edit, their relationship going through the movie. Awesome. Uh, Jody, you've had a very illustrious, beautiful career that we have followed and loved uh, for so long. Uh, talk about uh, preparing for this role in comparison to your other roles, especially uh, in portraying Nancy Hollander. Did you speak with her? How did, did you have any meetings with her? How did you get into that character? Yeah, I was so lucky. I was able to meet up with Nancy a couple of times uh, before we started shooting. And then she came to Cape Town as well when Mohamedou, the, the two of them came together to Cape Town while we were shooting. So that was fun. Um, I've never played an actual character or actual person. Um, you did what? say to me that you played the Anna and the Anna and the King. I right? did, but she was long dead <laughs> and she was a liar. So that was easy. Not really a real person. You could lie about her and it didn't really matter. Um, but with Nancy, you know, you do feel that responsibility to make sure that you honor uh, not just who she is, but the, her mission. Uh, and in, in this case, I didn't really honor who she was because she's a very nice person and my character is rude. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and um, that was sort of a choice that I felt worked well for the movie and uh, Nancy was okay with it. She seems to have a good sense of humor about it. Um, she's actually a lovely person. And, um, but I, I think the clue to that was, was actually in, in, uh, when, we, when I met Mohamedou and I taped some recordings with him, he did talk about how Nancy was, he called her the alpha dog, you know, and she's tough, she's tough, she doesn't care about anything but the case. And I think that's, there's a side to her that's like that. I mean, she's a lovely person when we meet her, but I think when she's working, 
there is this other side, and I think maybe you hold, took hold of that. Yeah, well, she's very steely, and um, yeah. she talks very softly, and <laughs> she barely moves, um, and she sort of exerts her power in that way, which I think is very interesting. I, and, you know, I, 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 as I said to her, this is not going to be an imitation. I'm not very good at doing imitations. Um, but I just, uh, I think what was, what was really nice was really having, I, f I felt in some ways that, that our character, Shailene and my character were one, it's sort of like we're working together and, uh, so much of the little details of our little micro relationship about the, the tension between us, um, I found very interesting and then I thought was very helpful to Muhammadu's story. So I, th I feel like we, fo I focused on that more, it was just the dynamic between Shailene and Nancy. Awesome. Uh, Tahar, uh, talk about, you know, meeting Muhammadu and, you know, just getting into a headspace that obviously is very difficult. And I know that uh, you said this publicly before that he holds no grudges. Like, mm -hmm. he's just such a lovely person. <laughs> like, something that I could never do. Can you talk a little bit about channeling that, uh, that energy? Uh, yeah, so. me neither. I couldn't do it, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's too, but yeah, uh, Muhammad is such an incredible person. When you first meet him, you get struck by uh, his light, the way he could joke with you, uh, especially when you know what he's been through. It's, it's, it's almost impossible to, to conceive. But uh, yeah, we met uh, virtually. And uh, as Jody said, they flew to um, South Africa. And uh, we just bumped into each other in front of the hotel when I was heading to the shooting. And uh, I felt like I'm, I felt like he was part of the, almost part of the family or a good friend of mine that I haven't seen for years. And he was like, just, hey man, where are you? And, and still I was struck. But what, what, um, what impresses me the most with Mohamedou is uh, his ability to just transform anger into forgiveness. Really. So when 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 you're channeling that forgiveness aspect, I mean, obviously we get into a lot of the big scenes uh, at Guantanamo Bay. Uh, I, I, in preparation for those scenes, uh, I believe you you asked to be put in shackles. You wanted to feel exactly what what he went through. You talk about that. Yeah, I needed it. Otherwise, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been possible for me to to just act uh properly and as you know kevin uh did a lot of documentaries so he knows exactly what it is to be true to catch a real emotion so he can't fake <laughs> so <laughs> i needed some realistic condition uh back for him as well and just so i can uh, have a taste of what it is so yeah there was the shackles uh, i asked kevin to turn down to, uh, to make the um, the cell as cold as possible so i can uh I can be helped in a way. And yeah, it was tough. Because uh, how, how could I possibly know what it is to be tortured like this? Yeah. And uh, I don't know how to, I don't think I have the ability to, you know, to create something out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I need to, maybe I'm a bit, you know, but I need to, <laughs> to sense it. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Benedict, so you're playing uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Stuart Couch, uh, you know, someone who's very conflicted in the feelings of how he's pursuing this case. Uh, talk about your preparation for, for this role and who, who did you speak to? I'm sure there were a lot of things you couldn't get access to because government and stuff, but can you share a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, no, for, for, for sure. Um, but I had, I had access to all I needed in meeting uh, Stuart himself, and he was amenable, gentlemanly, courteous, uh, incredibly helpful and honest about that whole extraordinary journey and emotional vault fast from wanting blood and then being brought to a realization that everything that he founds his belief on from the law to the military to christianity and not necessarily in that order was being undone by the actions at guantanamo and he couldn't with any conviction um square his conscience and so he stepped away he did that extraordinary thing of giving up the case and i i i, I was attracted to the role um because of that journey. I mean, it's just, it's just a wonderful sort of thing to, 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 to graph and to chart. And as far as preparation, I looked into a lot of what 
it is to be a Marine. Um, I didn't go to boot camp. You might be surprised to hear. I didn't have the time. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I researched the book. I read about um, what was happening to the law at that time. I, um, I talked to Stuart himself and he was, like I said, very forthcoming and informative with uh, as what he's allowed to say um, about that time and his experience of it. But I think for me, the most important thing is to sort of touch base with the emotional journey of a character. And, you know, when you have someone like Kevin at the helm, not to put all the pressure on his shoulders, but they're pretty broad when it comes to veracity and truth and investigative uh, uh, thoroughness um, and accuracy. So I, I, I didn't have to become a scholar on the subject. I just had to understand what it was to be that person in that position in that time. Awesome. Uh, Shailene, in many ways, you are the almost a consciousness of the audience, the viewer, because you're having these kind of, these very conflicting conversations with uh, Nancy Hollander about, you know, maybe he did do it, you know, that, that doubt, everyone, everything that we're feeling during that time in, in, our, in our nation's history, uh, you know, playing Terry Duncan, can you talk about getting prepared for that and how you uh, approach that uh, portrayal? Yeah, so Terry is a combination of two different lawyers who worked on the case. Um, and so the story that we depict in the film isn't necessarily the true story of Terry Duncan, um, but it's an amalgamation of, of different people's storylines. And it felt really important to me, and, and I know to the film, to depict someone whose emotions take over her ability to to stay neutral in a situation. And I think when we look at fear, it's easy to look at it from a very mental based place. But I think for her, she had a deep emotional fear, a fear of isolation, a fear of um, of feeling neglected, a fear of, of being kicked out of, of society in a way, because she, what she wants to do is right, but then she gets in her head about are the decisions she's making is right? What does right and wrong even mean? What are the implications of this for my personal life and this man's life and my, my partner's life? Um, so it felt, it felt really, I think having that emotional bond with Tahar, with Muhammadu's character that Terry had and really leaning into the emotions in the room where what jo Jody could lean more into like the, the intellectual aspect of it and the, um, the need to get information and, and do some, do something with that information felt felt like the heart and soul of, of what was going to, the heartbeat of what was going to help this case come to its fruition. Because at, at the end of the day, we all just want to emotionally connect and understand one another. And I think for Terry, she she did let her emotions get in the way of, of her ability to be a removed and detached lawyer. But at the same time, those emotions is what also, I think, let her see the heart and soul of who this man was and bring that to her team back home. Awesome. Uh, uh, Kevin, I have a question for you. And I think, uh, I don't know if this was just because it's the script. Was there ever uh, any decision or discussion? Because where the movie ends obviously is with Muhammadu, you know, winning his first case. And then there's a lot of years that go on after that uh, decision to end the movie there and not go through some of those other things that I'm sure would have been very you know, litigated and very lawyer stuff, but... Well, you, you know, there could have been the TV show. We could have done the six-hour mm -hmm. version. But I, I think the big challenge, actually, in doing the adaptation was there's, it's, such, it's a story that takes place over so many years because you haven't just got the 14 years he spent in Guantanamo. You've also got some of the time before that, which you need to understand. You know, he left Mauritania as a kid, the first person in his family to go to, go to university. He gets a scholarship to Germany. He joins up with Al Qaeda unknowingly, unwittingly. When he goes to Afghanistan, he he he's then uh, um, harassed by the German police. Blah 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 blah. You need to know a lot about him, um, and so you know. Yes, we could have done something a bit like Carlos, that great TV show that uh, the, the French director, whose name evades me at the moment, did. Um, uh, but uh, we were always trying to figure out with the adaptation, you know, where where is the absolute focus of this and. Once we realized that the the relationships with the lawyers were at what was at the heart of the story that we wanted to tell, um, you know, we, 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 we pincered in on those couple of years, really, the sort of what in reality was like 2003 to 2005, 6, um, and, um, uh, and had to do this kind of this device at the end where we, we sort of jump forward to his 
to his release. But I think dramatically that works surprisingly well, actually. That it's a bit of a shock to the audience because, you know, you see him win. The audience, I think, are, 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 are so invested by that, by that stage in him and, and in the case. And, uh, you know, it's a gut punch to see when the card comes up and says he was he was uh, uh, imprisoned again, you know, or he was, he was not released at that point, spent another seven years in prison. So, um, yeah, we could, have, we could have focused on many different aspects of the story, but this, this is the one that I think went to the themes that I was most interested in about the importance of the rule of law. And I suppose that was really the, the kind of intellectual theme that I had at the back of my mind. Yeah. Uh, this question is kind of, this is for everyone, and it's a follow-up to what I asked uh, Shaleen Woodley earlier. So the, the, as the movie unfolds, we, we all get a sense, and I think it's pretty definitive, that Mahamadou did not do what he's accused of doing. However, Jodie Foster's character has a very, very uh, poignant speech about, it's not about whether he did or, or not, it's about the rule of law and how this ties to that. Do you think that the movie presents itself to the world as a definitive answer to Muhammadu's innocence or not? Or is it really about the rule of law? I guess, which way do you think the movie... I don't, personally, I don't think it's about that. I don't think it's about, I think he is innocent. I, I'm, you know, as close to being 100% sure as you can be about, about anything. And as you speak to Nancy Hollander, she'll say to you, look, the, 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 the um, American government spent probably 30, 40 million dollars investigating this. They tortured him and they, they questioned him for 14 years. If they didn't come up with any evidence in that time, I suspect there is no evidence out there. So I think we can say that he's innocent, but it's not really about that. It's about, you know, should people be treated like this? And about understanding the other. And, you know, the, 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 the Muslim man accused of terror is probably, uh, the least loved person in the world and the least understood person. And I think for me, that was, it was that, like Shailene was saying, you know, it's that emotional connection. And Tahar does such a beautiful job of, of bringing us in, in a non-sentimental way into understanding the full humanity of this, of this man. So it's a film about humanity and about should, you know, why, why are we doing this to other human beings? What possible excuse can can there be? And it's 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 kind of beyond uh, uh, his innocence or 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 his guilt. I'd, I'd echo the same thing. I mean, you know, when I first came to the book before we produced it as a production company myself with Adam Ackland, and we what 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 really threw me in was this. It was a journey about humanity and about resilience and about some kind of extraordinary superhuman ability, like I touched on, of being able to transform fear repression danger and anger into love understanding and forgiveness and it's not a document of fact it is definitely a document of a human struggle and of the players involved in that human struggle to justify their actions and th that that there is a strong argument for why that happened it is driven by an incredibly strong emotion that swept across um all governmental forces involved in any kind of investigation or arrests or, or mishandling of, of those they arrested um post 9 11 there was a nation in fear of another attack fearing that there was a literally a ticking bomb in in in, in a real sense that there was another plot on the horizon so even that has to be part of the equation it's a real examination of how we respond to the most extreme situations and our hero is someone who manages to respond to the most extreme situations by maintaining his humanity. And I think considering all that's going on in the world, it still has a burning relevance. You know, this is about um, endurance and tolerance and bravery and humanity. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'd add. Did, did you ever ask Lieutenant uh, Colonel Stewart if he believed that was in uh, I can't remember, so I don't want to say, but um, well, yes, I we, honestly we can't remember. That's not a dodge, but I didn't. I can't I, remember. I, I, did, I did. I did. The line in the the line which Jody in the scene with Jody and uh, and and Benedict share in the bar at the end, where he says, "If Judge Roberts, uh, uh, you know, finds him innocent, then that's good enough for me. But if any evidence comes up, I'll stick the needle in his arm in his arm myself." That line is absolute. That's a couch. That's clearly cut from his words, 
and that's how situation. he feels. And so he, he, he believes that he is innocent because no evidence came up to suggest otherwise. And uh, he's, he's... And none that was extracted by legal means or Christian uh, means uh, or uh, humane uh, means. Uh, absolutely. And I think that you can't underestimate the heroism of Couch standing up against you sort of united front of the, uh, of the military um, uh, legal service to say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to prosecute this. This is built on a, built on such falsehood and inhumanity. I'm not going to prosecute this case. And I, I think it's really remarkable that this is not a story of uh, uh, um, about kind of partisan politics. You know, Trump is very definite a Republican. They're definitely a Republican, a Christian Republican. Um, Nancy is like a dyed in the wool progressive liberal. Um, and they are friends now. Did you still call Couch yeah. Trump? Did I just imagine that? He did. He did. He's hard. <laughs> I'm not, sorry, tell him to crash. I didn't play Donald Trump. <laughs> that one might be. Anyway, right. but, I, but I think, <laughs> something about I think the hair. that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We can edit that out. Yeah. Too soon. Um, too soon. But no, I know why your mind <laughs> went there, Kevin. And it's because, you know, look at the sort of magma baiting of Mitt Romney, a Republican who dared to stand up against a leader that's caused so much fervor and fear and anxiety and anger and a uh, Republican from his party saying this isn't legal, this isn't good, and, and having his own voice, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an equivalent. It's not exactly the same as a, as a metaphor or a simile, or whatever you want to call it, an exemplar of, but there is some parity, I think. Um, mm. We live in a time where people are often too scared to stand up to the overwhelming force, which in this case, and in, and in and what we're going through at the moment, is fear um so yeah uh, he wasn't driven away from his principles because of that and for that he i, I think he's very heroic um but yeah that, that's actually a great segue to my next great uh, my next question for you tahar and this has to probably be a big shout out to the script by mb travin uh rory haynes and sarab nashurvani i think i seen that correctly um i apologize i'm not um but what i think the film does so brilliantly it really i think paints a the portrait of the world's fear of the unknown, in particular, the Muslim community, because it's just easier to accept that he could, he could have done it because if, if, if you say he's innocent, it, it dispels this nasty narrative that's been brought in the last few years. Can you talk a little bit about that personal connection and seeing someone now who is so forgiving and is so, in, in, in a word, I guess you could say he's happy today and you feel like you wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, none of us would be in that situation. Can you talk about that personal connection for yourself? Oh, um, what I'd say is that, uh, how can I answer that? How can I put it? Um, yeah, there's uh, obviously a fear around, uh, about, and people are making a mistake sometimes by uh, uh, thinking that terrorism is Islam. Of course, it's not. Uh, if you if you want to study it and you read about it, you you will understand that there there's a it's a mistake. They're, they're terrorists. That's it. They got terrorists. And I'm not saying that it doesn't exist because there's a few people, and it's a few finally, that are just uh, uh, disturbing the whole thing. So yeah, sometimes it gets me because uh, I wasn't raised like this, and I know a lot of people that are against this, of course. And, uh, but nowadays the problem is mainly is that because of that, you are put in a position that you have to explain something to some people that is absolutely obvious for you, you know? So uh, sometimes you can feel like you're defending yourself and you don't have to because there's no point finally. Um, but about Muhammad, it's, it's, it's way, it's way more than that because I'm just talking about a human being, not even a Muslim or whatever. Because when I, when I read the script and when I see the movie, what I see is someone who's, uh, uh tortured and there's no innocent, he is innocent to me. Uh, and, uh, there's no charge against him and he could have been anybody else. And that is one of the strength of the movie because yes, of course, it's dealing with 9-11 and what happened because it's, it's true. It's true events, but you can take the same story and put it in another uh, um, atmosphere and you could have the same feeling at the end of the movie. And that is what uh, Kevin and, and the, uh, the script writers uh, managed so well. And finally, what you have to take out of the movie, uh, uh, if there's a, a lesson 
uh, apart from uh, Muhammad and what he is, is that we better not be uh, uh, controlled by our fears. That is uh, a big problem, I guess, to me. Awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll let Jody Foster please kick off this, uh, the answer to this question. Uh, what was the most difficult uh, scene to shoot for yourself? Oh, wow. I don't know. I feel like Tahar got all the difficulties. We got to watch. at a table. And it really was. I mean, I think that's, you know. Uh, Reading. Really, <laughs> Reading all the folders. The great moment of the movie for me really is to be able to just watch, to be in the room with Tahar and to um, watch a young actor explore, I say young, Maybe he's not that young, but, you know. <laughs> not anymore. Uh, younger than me. Um, but to watch somebody um, find it, you know, to find that place, to find that character, and to be witness to that really is, it feels like a sacred place, really. I, I just thoroughly enjoyed that, that and, you know, being in Cape Town. Um, so I don't know. The most difficult was probably the time we had a wind, we, we had a windstorm in the, <laughs> of the movie. That was probably difficult. I had to try to keep my hat on. That was also very difficult. <laughs> um, but I do want to. I do want to say just what, from what you guys were talking about. Um, you know, the whole one of the reasons why this film attracted me. You know, of course, Kevin um, and the opportunity to work with Tahar and Benedict and Shailene. But um, you know, I was surrounded nine eleven. I'm an American, and um, it's a very singular time in our history. It's a very singular time for us to wake up and to have that much fear. And um, how you react to fear is a measure of who you are as a people, as a culture, as a person. And um, this is, it's really the story of, you know, how America reacted to their fear was to create a boogeyman and to fight that boogeyman everywhere that they saw it. And how Muhammadu fought fear was to love. You know, that's, that's what got him through all of those years. All of those many, many, many years uh, was his faith and his love. And um, that's really a testament to Islam. Um, and uh, maybe this is an opportunity for people to understand uh, that, you know, the, the greatest tenet of Islam is justice, just like the great, greatest tenet of Christianity is love. And, and those, um, that's really what's so beautiful about Muhammadu. So that's what I was moved by. And that's, um, I, feel, I feel like that inspired the whole experience. Mm. So so beautiful. By the way, happy twenty fifth birthday, Jodie Foster. You're not oh. you're not you're not older. We're, we're not, <laughs> not gonna bring that to life. Uh, Shailene, uh, do you want do you answer? Do you what, what was difficult for you? I guess uh, in some of those scenes. I mean, it's a very boring answer, but I'd have to just echo what what Jody said. Working and watching. I don't even want to say working with, just watching Tahar. I mean, we were in a we were in a cell, eight by eight cell, for days and days and days on end in Cape Town, and it was hot. And there there was a lot of elements at play, and every and and some of Tahar's scenes were monologues, these pages and pages and pages of dialogue. And every single time he did one of the his scenes they were completely different and yet just as honest and authentic as the one before it it was like watching live theater um i've never experienced anything like it and i just remember after some of the the takes jody and i would look at each other and just kind of like it was a lot it was a lot to take in because we were witnessing someone not act his way through emotion but genuinely feel the tides of emotion and and the energy in the room was so dense because of that and so um palpable it was so so real that i just you know i i feel like i constantly just want to say thank you to tahar because if Muhammad and Muhammadu was there a few days to be able to watch, but I think the the specific scenes that I'm talking about when when he was in the cell and we were going to visit him at Guantanamo is a little bit too hard for Muhammadu to sit through and watch. So I don't think he stayed the entire days. But knowing Muhammadu now a little bit and knowing you Tahar and what you were able to do with his character, I just the the way that you um, depicted him in this film. I think you did him the greatest honor in the whole world, and it was such an honor to watch it. But to, to know a man who is genuinely so full of love and forgiveness, this is not BS that we're, we're spitting out there because we believe in this person and, you know, we have an agenda. 
he really, he walks into a room and the entire room is magnified. The entire room, it changes frequency. I don't know how to explain it other than he's, he's living on a, on a vibration that I feel like we all wish we could be living on. And what you, the way that you portrayed that in this film to her is so, it's so beautiful. And I just, I'm grateful to have been able to watch it in person in the flesh. So difficult. I mean, I think the most difficult thing was just going, okay, how do I, how do I you, hold space for that in a, in, in a way that's as honest and as present as what, as what he's offering us in these moments. Oh, you're prom king. Look at that. You're amazing. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shailen and Jody, you are the best partners I've ever had. And uh, uh, really you helped me a lot to reach that point. As you know, it was not easy to portray. But really, thank you. Because each time I could rely on you, on, on, on the way you can, on the way you act, what you are, whether it's when we act or... Uh, when we were just on set. So thank you so much. Really, we don't do what we do uh, by ourselves. So thank you so much. And uh, hats off. <laughs> uh, Be Benedict, any uh, difficult scene for you? Oh, he bent um, the whole time. How about that? I was really sick. I like think I might have been patient zero. I remember doing the movie. <laughs> so uh, yeah no um i mean yeah I, I it's small fry but i was i was incredibly ill for the whole thing i mean with every symptom covid had to throw at me check uh so in all seriousness yeah, i don't know what it was but i was pretty sick and then um i mean borderline pneumonia for the whole shoot and i had this uh this yeah. is so actually to be complaining about this i feel embarrassed <laughs> to be going last time this. i don't you know i swam with some sharks i jumped off a cliff or two i mean got, you know, none of this happened <laughs> I spent hours in a makeup van because I had really long hair, much bigger than this for, for a movie I did with Jane Campion shortly after called The Power of the Dog. So she wanted me very grown out. So I had a bull cap on uh, with a Marine crew cut. Um, so mm -hmm. it was very hot and very uncomfortable. It took about two and a half hours, three hours to put on every morning. And I was sick. But apart from that, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't really have much to complain about. It's, it's a great role. I wasn't there for as long as the others. And I had the pleasure and the privilege of working with the casts that I was with, but also with, with Jody and those two fantastically well-written scenes, those sort of standoffs. And, I, you know, I, I was on the point of throwing up and getting sunstroke blinded, but um, at the same time, I was opposite Jody Foster. So I couldn't have been feeling worse, but happier about it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's a real transformation, actually, to watch Benedict. I mean, he, he looked so different and he sounded so different. And about halfway through the cake, I could just see him start to sweat. It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible because when you're a skull cat, it's like an it's like an alien. It's like the guy in aliens. I can't remember what the, the android's called when he gets bleeding. You know, I just got they got this white wig glue kind of running down my head, going, "This is not authentic." This is certainly not Stuart, <laughs> Stuart Couch. It's probably more Trump than Stuart Couch um, or, or Giuliani. Um, but yeah, it was uh, slightly distracting. Sorry about that, Jodie. It must have been a very odd <laughs> thing to have to hold your own against. Freak sweating uh, uh, Shout out for best makeup and hairstyle, though. Had no idea that you had a big uh, long hair. Yeah, man. Yeah. Big, exactly. No, it's a, it's a sort of, I don't know, it, I don't know why it's a secret. I mean, it's an extraordinary job they did. I mean, their patience and their craft was phenomenal. And in, and in the heat to maintain it all through the day, it's pretty, pretty extraordinary, actually. It really was. I never believed it. And it made me look five years younger. <laughs> Kevin, you were saying? No, I was just saying I never believed it was going to work. I kept trying to persuade Benedict to cut his hair. Oh. I said it's never going to work. You know, how can you put a bolt? You've got all the it's so much hair. Um, but it was it was kind of one of those mirac miraculous things. He turned up and he'd had a you know. Like yeah. a, I think we should move. On. I think we should move on from my hair and my bald cap. <laughs> <laughs> I always put, this, it always gets brought up in conversation. And I feel like oh my god. You could you so could always CGI his hair out and just see how great that would have looked. It would have been <laughs> interesting. Um, my, my last question for you guys, because time is uh, wrapping up here, and I think it's probably uh, one of our mo m more important ones. What do you want audiences to take away from this? What message of peace, love, forgiveness, whatever? Uh, this movie has so many. It hits so many great, graceful, for beautiful notes. But what's the one thing you want? Uh, audiences take away or what is the one thing you took away from from this experience of filming it so either one you can take and i'll start with kevin uh well it's kind of already been said so beautifully by shailene and jody and benedict i think but 
Um, the thing that made me want to do this movie was Skyping with, Skyping with Mohamedou and realizing that he was such a beautiful person and so funny. I mean, that's something we haven't mentioned is he's hilariously yeah. funny and he's a huge movie buff. He'll know more about the mm. movies of the early 2000s than, than, than <laughs> Will Clayton. Uh, because all the guards, uh, when, he, when he sort of had confessed, supposedly, mm -hmm. the guards were allowed to give him DVDs and they brought in all the DVDs they were watching, 19, 20 year old Southern soldiers. Oh. And uh, so he's seen a lot of very odd movies, but he has also got good taste because he's, he's seen um, uh, The Big Lebowski, I think 86 times. Oh, you know? yeah. I was about to say, I was like, he's probably seen Super Troopers and he's just like... You know, that's why, that's why we use the Dylan song at the end, because that's obviously from The Big Lebowski. Mm -hmm. And that's his, you know, he knows, he knows everything about that movie. He loves it. So, but, but really, yeah, it was him. And I think, I think Jody has said this, that, that he meets fear with love, but not just love, but with understanding. And in his book, it's one of the amazing things that he's always putting himself in the shoes of the guards. Mm. And he's going, I wonder why they're doing that. I wonder what it feels like to torture someone. I wonder what it, why they're so scared and what they think about me. And it's the most amazing feat of empathy. And I think that empathy mm. is something that's in short supply in the world. And, and uh, you know, he exemplifies it. Shout out to Jeff Bridges and John Goodman. Uh, <laughs> Shailene Woodley. Everything that Kevin said. And, <laughs> and I think maybe one of the biggest things that I took away from it was assumption. I think one of the things when, when there's fear and when fear clouds our ability to, when it, I, I, fear is like a chokehold. You feel like you can't breathe because you feel like your, your mind isn't working straight and you're not, oftentimes you're not able to isolate your own emotions and feelings from that of like the collective or that of society or media. And I think with this movie, what through the story of watching these lawyers with Muhammadu and watching Couch with Muhammadu and his experience of the justice system and his experience of, of this human being and, and his fair right to try all of those things, I think assumption played a big role for me. You know, not not just listening to what people around you are saying, not listening or buying into the stories of fear, but really taking a step back and going, how do I feel about this situation? What do I think about this situation, regardless of the feelings and emotions of those who exist around me? Um, that was a big one for me. Benedict Cumberbatch. God, how do I add to those two answers? Um, to, yeah, just I suppose to look at to look at fear and anger and try and meet it with love and understanding to try to somehow like Charlene says remove yourself enough distance yourself enough from to hold that feeling because like Jody said if you live through that as an American it's a very just reaction but then to hold that and say how do I how does this then manifest in action how do I then rationalize this overriding emotion that like Charlene says can blind you into the worst most instinctive and I mean, based in a sort of primordial part of your brain reactions, it just literally, we know, scientifically triggers a base behavior. And it's, it takes a superhuman effort. And that's kind of who Mohammed represents. That's who he is. He's got this superhuman ability to investigate the other, to challenge his assumptions and what might be ours and move from a position that like you said um you know at the beginning of this interview clayton that most of us would find it impossible to forgive our our, our torturers and uh, impossible to to go towards understanding our captors and our aggressors and yet when he does that he finds he finds the strength and the solace to survive and come out yes incredibly damaged but also a shining example to the rest of us of how best to be human and that was different for me. Uh -oh. And Queen Jodie Foster. Oh, as you know, I always kind of come at the end, like everybody's already said anything. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I, 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 uh, I agree with that. This, they tried to break him. I mean, I think that was the objective. The objective was to break him and to punish him for being a man of faith. Um, and he answered that with, um, really embracing his humanity and that saved him. I mean, that's what's so amazing is that his vulnerability saved him. Um, and I would argue, I mean, he is damaged and, and I'm sure nobody would ever want to have lived through what Muhammad lived through, but he is, he is a better man because of it. 
Um, and that's really surprising that he could go through what he went through and become a better man. I'd also uh, like to add one final thing, if yes, I may, please. which is that obviously we spent a lot of this time talking about Mohammedu for good reason, but uh, you know, the movie is also about Nancy Hollander and Stuart Couch. And, uh, you know, in their way, they are heroic. I think both of them would actually, the real people would say, I'm not a hero. You know, Couch actually got quite annoyed with me when I, when I called him brave for what he'd done. He said, you know, somebody who comes back from Vietnam missing a leg, they're brave, I'm not brave. But I think, they, I think he was brave. And I think Nancy in her day to day, going up against the might of the American government, often hopelessly, by the way. So she loses like 95% of her cases and she expects that and for the last 40 years she's been losing every case losing every case but keeping going banging on that door fighting for people's uh liberty for the, for, for 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 the rule of law for justice and i think there's something really heroic in a in a, in a kind of resilient way about her as well oh, amazing mauritanian is a amazing film i'm so glad that it exists in this time that we're in and that people will learn about the story I thank you all so much for joining us today. Kevin McDonald, Shailene Woodley, Tahar Rahim, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Jody Foster. Uh, you're all my heroes. Thank you so much.